Hey everybody, it's your friend Carson coming back at you again. I uh, decided to do a little video blog about uh, this little kiln building project that I've been doing. Um, I lost a lot of footage on this project uh, when my old phone kicked the bucket. So uh, we're kind of jumping in in the middle of the project. But uh, just a brief overview, I bought a house a couple of years ago uh, as an investment property and the old mailbox at the house was old and crusty and I was like you know what I'm gonna make a mailbox kiln the, the mailbox kiln thing has been done if you're ever on the uh, forums and stuff uh, it's been done before so um, you know that's where I got the idea from but uh, anyways I think um, the execution is gonna be pretty cool uh, so I'm gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see what I'm talking about Carson's Kiln Building Workshop, a.k.a. The Laundry Room, a.k.a. The Old Glass Studio, a.k.a. Bombed Out. Uh, so what I've done so far is I took the old mailbox and I've painted it black. I actually gave it a two-tone paint job. 1050 Cap Glass Street. So that's a... It's kind of dusty. It's, this project is one of my uh, projects that's just been sitting around for a good little while. Uh, and I'm finally getting re-inspired to, to tackle it. So what I did first is I sanded everything down. I threw a coat of primer on everything. Then I took some sparkly blue paint and just painted this section. Then I took some foam letters and I masked it off. And then I painted the whole thing with uh, high temperature black paint. It's the kind that you use for um, painting grills. So anyways, so if we come back around to the front side of this thing, I've already made the doors. This is, I believe, uh, 18 gauge, maybe 20 gauge galvanized. Uh, I decided to do a split door on this. I've already insulated the box, made a shelf. Now I made the shelf with no no break or anything so it's a little bit crusty but it should work um, and as you guys can see I've got fracks there's a side angle of it there's the inside of it it's a little bit some of the stuff fluffs off I, I still haven't put um, any uh, rigidizer on this so that's the inside view of the kiln if you guys can see it I'm going I think I'm going to try to maintain or retain the uh the functionality of the big door flipping up like uh like if you're working on a big project throughout the day you can put stuff in here and then at the end of the day you can open it up put it back and, and close it up uh for the feet i just used several um i guess those are what one and a half inch uh conduit hangers those seem to work pretty well for kiln feet uh for small kilns of this kind um, you know, so uh, to hold the fracks on the door and to hold the fracks on the inside of the kiln, I use what's called fiber stick cement. And then I'm using just a couple of uh, mechanical fasteners here. Those are, uh, oh, what are those called? I can't, you know, I'm drawing a blank right this second, but you know, the things. So anyways, here's like a bunch of fracks and stuff I got laying around. Here are those letters that I used to mask. Then I had the the uh brilliant idea the other day that um i would for this kiln i wanted a uh wireless bluetooth uh boom box uh that i can integrate into the controller as well uh so the controller box is going to be on the side of this thing and uh, so anyways uh here is what i've got i've got to fit all this into a six by six by six aluminum box. So, um, and I'll, I'll pull those things out. But anyways, I'm going to be attaching the box like so, or maybe like so. It's gonna look something like that when it's done. I, I haven't decided which way. I'm, I'm just kind of laying everything out. Um, so anyways, I've got Let's see what all I've got. I've got a one amp, 12 volt power supply. So 120 uh, volt 
AC to 12 volt, one amp DC power supply. That might come out of its little housing. We'll see. Um, I've got the amplifier out of an old set of computer speakers. Um, so my partner, Will, he donated some computer speakers to the cause. So this is the amplifier out of them. Um, and that, that requires that 12 volt, one amp power supply. And it's got, it's a two channel. So it's got one channel here and one channel here, which I might have to desolder that. Uh, and then also this is the input for the, uh, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So I'm not, I haven't decided whether I'll desolder this and this barrel pin connector and just go straight to the board off of my power supply. I haven't decided whether I'm going to desolder this and just go straight from that to the, uh, to one channel of the speakers because one channel of the speakers if you guys are familiar with them basically the the way this amplifier worked was it was sitting in the computer how the computer speaker housing and so one housing has the the dc uh supply going to it and this is the out for the other speaker that would just be uh just passive so the amplified signal goes from this connector to the other speaker and then it's got a little clicky on off switch little led indicator so that's that i've got to fit a solid state relay in there uh, this is a el cheapo grande solid state relay from china uh big clive who is one of my like youtube heroes he's taking one of these apart uh it says it's rated for uh 25 amps um the, these kilns only this kiln will only be drawing about mm, 700 to 700 to 900 watts so about six to eight amps six to nine amps for the heating element itself um so this this should hold up just fine uh and if it doesn't it's like three bucks or i could go and get a get a better one for like 20 um this is again this is kind of a quick and dirty project uh this right here is just a set point controller it's a the same chinese brand i've used them before they work pretty well um it's got a bunch of different pinouts on it a little diagram on there kind of tells you what what's going on so one so basically you have a uh you supply power to this thing and it and it's got a little uh uh, rectifier in there that just supplies power to the front and the logic. Uh, then it's got a solid state relay in, uh, out, so it switches. It switches. Um, it's got a low voltage that that you put to these co contactors, and then your load goes on this con these contactors. So um, this is not switching the full current. Uh, I was actually talking to somebody the other day and kind of gave them run the rundown on how uh, kilns are typically wired. I've got a Type K thermocouple here. Uh, I think it's a two inch probe, two and a half inch probe. So that'll be going through the side of this thing, inside of the box and into the side of this thing. And that's what gives the controller feedback. It tells it how hot it is. And then here are the, uh, the two little three and a half inch speakers that came out of that um uh the the old computer speakers and these these are pretty decent speakers they're i mean they're little cheap ones five watt four ohm i mean they were paired originally they were designed to go with that amplifier board so i'm gonna you know i'll use them uh the other things that i'm gonna be uh i was hoping to be able to put a disco light in this thing uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, it's going to get pretty crowded in here anyway, so the disco light might have to wait. I guess I could have gotten some uh, some uh, little LEDs uh, for that and, and just made another circuit. Uh, I am going to also uh, have to put a 5-volt USB power supply in here. Um, so that'll be... I'm, I'm going to be putting one in there. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention. 
the uh, the Bluetooth. So the Bluetooth receiver will be mounted somewhere inside the box uh, in in a hole that's cut out. It's got a little mic in it, and you have to. I was hoping to not have to have this as part of the controls, but you'll have to. I have to have it exposed somehow. Um, and so it's got a little three three and a half millimeter jack and a little uh, uh, five volt micro USB connector. So I'm going to be actually, and this has all been part of the plan, I'm going to be using the uh, just a USB, a two, a two port USB into the wall power adapter. And then I'm also planning on uh, installing another one somewhere here so you can charge up your phone uh, while the, uh, you know, while the kiln is plugged in. Uh, and as far as the wiring goes, I am probably going to have two switches. Um, so I'll have one switch for the wiring or excuse me, for the kiln to turn on the kiln controller and the element and the other switch will be for the accessories. So the, uh, you know, the Bluetooth speaker and, uh, and the, the phone charger element of this thing. So yeah, so it's going to get kind of crowded in this thing. I think it's going to be a, a fun little project. Um, the other thing I have to do is I have, I have, uh, I've wrapped up my own element. I've made my own elements for a while now and it'll be quartz encased and it will be mounted. It'll be mounted going um, on the top. So it'll be inside of a quartz tube and it'll go all the way down the length of this kiln. And um, I'm going to have to have some mechanical fastening means on top of this thing. So what I'll probably do is drill holes and have a series of bolts running through. Um, and I'm also going to put a handle on top of this thing. And what I want to do is I'm going to wait for my handle till close to the last, uh, last thing to do. Um, so I can get an idea of my center of gravity once, once this is installed on the side. Um, cause it's going to change the center of gravity. Anyways, also have to put a little insulation on this little, uh, you know, hot pad thing, something that you can grab it with. So turn you guys back around. That's the, uh, that's the idea. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. It's kind of a little different thing and, uh, you know, so some little, just a little project that I'm kind of excited about and going to get going on and I'll try to keep everybody updated. Thanks.